Uh, so I guess uh, start at the beginning. We got to Korea, uh, spent a day here, ate some great food. The Korean food is wonderful in the Korean restaurants. And then took a bus to a monastery. And then they had a Dharma talk, well, which is a Buddhist term. And they said, we're going to ask you a question. We're going to ask you to look for the answer. And unbeknownst to us, we were part of an international conference of a bunch of intellectuals, people who had studied Buddhism for years, and people who know, knew a lot about Buddhism. I know a, a little bit about it. I don't think I know a lot about it. But one of the men came up to me, and he was he had two doctorates, okay? So he was a paradox, even in, within himself. Uh, didn't know that till I told him, and didn't get it till I insisted on him knowing that he was a paradox. But he came up to me, and he said, imagine if what we're about to experience is true. Imagine if what we've been reading about with Watts and everything else, and the people who have studied uh, the life and teachings of the Masters of Far East, imagine if we're here to experience such an event. And I thought, wow, wow, some of us have been looking at this for... Uh, a lot of years. I mean, I think lifetimes now that I look at it, but we've been looking at it uh, definitely uh, in this lifetime. I started reading on this stuff uh, 30 years ago, 35 years ago. I'm not sure. <laughs> but what we were presented with was a Zen master who said he could awaken us within a few days. And he said, you only have to do a few things. One is you have to trust me which I thought I have no reason not to trust him. First of all, I've been referred by a client of mine, a friend of mine, somebody that trusts me implicitly because we have co-created experiences in our lives, particularly his life, where he has had healings and a bunch of different things have happened in his life. And so I trust the man who brought me to this event. And then I meet the man who's running the Subul, is what they call him, uh, and I meet him, and I don't see any reason to mistrust him. I, I don't. So this intellectual, this paradox, comes up to me, and he said, you know, he asks to trust him. Why should we trust him? And I'm thinking, uh, we don't have any evidence not to trust him. He said, I don't think I can trust this man. Uh, what if he isn't what he claims? And I thought, that's not the point. He's asking you to trust him. That's all. He's not saying, believe what I claim. He's saying, trust me, follow my instructions, and you will get a result. If you don't do those things, you won't. And I'm fairly certain this, this intellectual man did not get any sort of a result except for an intellectual result. Uh, no experience, no experience of himself, no experience of uh, just that intimate, incredible you that exists in perfection and magnificence uh, because he refused to trust this man for, with no evidence. Right? My whole thing that I've been taught is trust. When somebody falls out of trust, look whether they've fallen out of trust with you or if they're just doing something that you don't like and then see how to trust them. Uh, basic bottom line, uh, www.micpeakperformance.com